Time to begin our Bible study tonight, and I'm glad everybody could be here. I <clears throat> Retta told me I need to tell everybody I got a cold. I already can't hear, but I really can't hear tonight. And, uh, and then I'm hoping that most people are going to be reading whenever uh, I'm trying to do a better job of letting y'all read the material and then me do it as opposed to just telling you the story. But I ran out of time last week. I told you I wasn't going to do it, and I went ahead and did it last week. But hopefully I won't do that this week. We're talking about Joseph um, this week, and we're in Genesis chapter 37. So go ahead, and we're not going to be going to other places. We'll go 37 straight on through the end there. And so you, if you'll just stay in Genesis, you'll be in the right area there. <clears throat> and we're going to... Um, read right down in here. Now, so you had um, you had two uh, central characters right here, Jacob and Esau. Um, and Esau went off to took his descendants to a different country, and Jacob decided to stay in Canaan, where God wanted his people to be. So he chose to obey God, and this is where we are right now. And then he's got his sons here, Jacob's sons. Um, and today we're talking about Joseph, um, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. <clears throat> now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bila and the sons of Zilphat, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. <clears throat> Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all the brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream. He told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear the dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves of field. <clears throat> then behold, my sheave arose and also stood up upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheave. And his brothers said to him, Shall, we indeed, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall? Um, so they hated him even more for his dreams and his words. <clears throat> then he dreamed still another dream, told his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the, even the stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed bow down to the earth before you? Uh, and his brothers envied him, but his father kept his matters in mind. Um, so there, to me, there's a lot of points in here, um, some lessons. Okay, so Joseph, when it said he came back and gave a, uh, so we're talking about the character of, my, of Joseph here. He came back from the fields early on in this, and he and gave a bad report from his brothers. Uh, Y'all have brothers and sisters like that? Huh? Um, the title tell or whatever. <clears throat> and, and so, um, you know, and especially, we've talked about this, we've seen this several times here. This is the favorite son. Um, did anybody in here have a child a later age in life? No, you did? Okay. Um, you did. Um, what's different about it? You're tired. You're tired? <laughs> yeah. More patient. More patient? Okay. Elsie, what do you think? I was tired. Tired? <laughs> Shane? Yeah. Sometimes things are not as important with the later ones as the first ones. OK. 
Okay. Okay. Um, Wendy, what do you think? You're going to second guess that, set, second that one? Okay. Um, okay. True. Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, and, and to me, I was just as um, impatient with Ashley, probably more impatient. And it seems like you kind of learn the next time around things don't really matter that much anymore. And that's the way I think about it. Um, <clears throat> I could easily see a younger child especially later on in life like he did, um, that you could be partial to that child. But it was openly partial in, in this family here, and there's a lot of brothers and sisters. Okay, so um, I came from a family of six, including me. Um, so if there's just one or two kids compared to six kids, or 12 as this is right here, what else, I mean, to me, my brothers and sisters, they could all get together and gang up on one person, you know? Um, and I could just see the dynamics in this family here. And then you've got a father that openly um, favors that, that son. In fact, so much he gave him this coat of many colors. Um, so what does it mean of many colors? What does that represent? Coat of many colors. Okay, all right, it's, um, well, it's more expensive than just a regular coat. I'm sorry? Status. status, there you go, status. Um, purple was an uh, expensive thing back then, so, I mean, this is just everything. They had him a, a coat of many colors. <clears throat> He's a tattletale um, every once in a while, at least in this part right here. So, um, I still can't see it to the extent where it, it builds up to at this point. Um, and then he comes back, and I laugh every time when I read this, and then he's telling all of his brothers this dream of how they're going to bow down before him, you know. And then he tells it again, and his, his, his dad, he's hearing all that everybody's saying about it, and so this time it even makes him kind of mad. I'm sure he's probably told Joseph, Joseph, don't do that stuff. And it even made him mad that time. You, don't say that like that. What am I supposed to be bound down for you too? I mean, that's what he said right in there. Um, okay, so we're going to jump down to here and then, let's see, 25 through 31. And I'm going to get someone to read that for me. 25 through 31. Who can read out loud? 25 through 31. Yes, 37. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. But Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. And then uh, Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up and lift him, lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his clothes. And he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of, of the goats, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Okay, um, so what did Joseph's brothers do to him? Sold him. They were about to kill him, though, weren't they? Now, what's a, what, it, it's pretty bad in, in that culture to kill someone, correct? Much less your own family. What usually happens when you kill someone? You're killed. This is your brother. 
even if he did get favoritism and all that other kind, they've really crossed a line um, in their minds in there. And then Reuben is the oldest who's talking to them about this, and, and they talk about just, and here comes a group coming by Ishmaelites, and they decide to just save them into, send them off into slavery. So that makes them feel a little bit better. His blood's not on their, um, their mind because they didn't have to kill him. So, um, but you know, it's just really unbelievable <clears throat> how this, this could happen to someone. Um, and, and we obviously know that from the rest of the story, Joseph is a very God-fearing person, um, is very obedient, um, but is, he's just a kid in this family um, as, as he's taken advantage of by his brothers and his brothers. Okay, so we're going to turn over now to uh, Genesis chapter 39. And um, let's see here. And so someone read uh, verses 1 through 6. <clears throat> Ready, you want to read that? Chapter 39, 1 through 6. Okay, so, um, and this is still a boy here we're talking about. Um, what would be, besides being killed, what would be one of the worst things that could happen to you as a child? <laughs> being cast out of your family, you're in a different country, um, and not to mention you're a slave at this point. Um, this is the worst thing that could have done to him. But, what happens in God's eyes? What happens with Joseph at this point right here? How's God in Joseph's life? I'm sorry? He found favor. Blessed everything that he did. Okay. So would you assume that he was probably still God-fearing and it showed in his daily life what Joseph did? Um, you know, and I, I, I think about us as we go through our lives there and I've heard people you know there's a lot of other place places that preach you know you're gonna get rich and everything like that and life doesn't always go that way and and there's really bad things that happen but all the way through it in this story right in here Joseph is faithful um, and a lot of times the bad things that happened to him led to good things and this um, what does it ultimately lead to in this situation with Joseph at the end, if you know the end of the story? He's going to save a lot of people. Right. You 
Yeah. You know, an another parallel, too, also is he was a slave and he ends up being a prince. And Jesus was in bondage and ended up being a prince for everybody. There there's a lot of parallels between them. That's good, good thoughts there. Anybody else? Donnie. Um, does anybody have that answer right off the top of their head? As to when, when um, Potiphar, are you talking about? Yeah, in other words, when Joseph became a slave in Egypt. I do not have that answer for you. Um, Oh, yes. Well, that's going to be evidence as we go through. These are people that don't believe in God, and yet they come back, and especially at the end, Pharaoh wants someone that is in the spirit of God to run um, bringing everybody and, and ruling it. And that's crazy that he would be asking that. So um, talking about a good example. Uh, but also he saw that God blessed him too. Um, and, and even whenever God would come into Potiphar's house, he blessed things that Potiphar did too. So they all reaped the wars. Yes? Um, I think I found here like Genesis 41 46, where Joseph was 30, when he made overseer of the king. So since he was 17, he sold him to Egypt. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. That you okay. All right. So the next little part right in here. Um, and at 17 years old, and right in here, he was a handsome man and an appearance. Uh, and this is in verse 7. I'm going to read 7 through 12. And it came to pass after these things that the master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, <clears throat> Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no, uh, no one greater in the house than I, nor was he kept back anything from the, me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. Um, what lessons can we learn about this part right in here that applies to us today about sin? Rodney? Yes. I think that's, that's something that jumps out to me. Right. Every time I read one of these stories like this, it's always sin against God. Well, and, and it's the... sin against God, too. But, I mean, yes. He, he would. But, uh, but that's, that's what we, we lose sight of. You know, when we do something wrong, it, it's a sin against God. Right. Well, but in, in addition to that, Ronnie, you, you parallel right there. He's talking about how Potiphar has given him everything in their house there. And you look at us, and God has given us reign over everything out here, everything. And then when we sin, that's what he was, if you compare that there, if you sin, you're sinning against God just like he would have been sinning against Potiphar there. He just asked him not to do that one thing there. And so that's very, very good. Okay, and I'm going to go to the next one right here in 11 through 20. <clears throat> but it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work, that none of the men in the house were inside. She called him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left, outside, uh, left his garment in her hand, fled, and ran outside. And so it was when she, she saw that he had left his garment and fled, that she called to the men in the house, spoke to them, saying, 
See, he has brought into this uh, house a Hebrew to mock us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a voice, and it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. She kept his garment with her until the master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like saying, the Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came to me to mock me. So it happened. I lift my voice, cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when the master heard these words, which the wife spoke to him saying, your servant did to me after this manner that is in anger and was aroused. Then Joseph master took him, put him in the prison in a place where the king's prisoners were combined and he was there in prison. Okay, so um, t tell me what lessons can we learn from this part right in here? Philip, you got some, in this part right in here, so here he is, he's done what he should do, he's rejected her, and he's ended up in prison. What lesson can we learn from that? I'm sorry? Yeah. Okay. But bad people will tell lies. Bad people will tell lies. And you might be on the wrong end of that Yeah. Good things, bad things happen to good people, good Christians that don't deserve it, didn't do anything. Things happen sometimes. Ronnie, were you about to say something? Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he's in prison and um, verses 21 through 23. I'm going to just read those real quick here in that same um, chapter there. Um, but the Lord was with Joseph, showed him mercy, gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Okay. So. Um, he was faithful. He was, and God showed him mercy. And this is going to affect how he's treated. And later on, of course, it's going to affect how he's going to get out at some point there. Um, but just, you, you keep seeing in here, things keep, here's Joseph, and then things get bad, get bad. But he's faithful through all of it, and God has blessed him in there. Um, and so this is, a really neat point here. I, I just really think this is a good part. Um, you know, when you, here's a, a young person, um, if he's probably in his 20s or something, his family has thrown him into slavery. He has no, um, no mother, no father. Um, he's tried to do the best thing that he could whenever he's working um, for someone that he really respected and you know, I'm sure he probably said I didn't do it, but he probably didn't get the chance to say it too much to Potiphar um, in this point because he threw him in the prison. Um, and it, it could definitely be disheartening, um, but God, the thing that we keep coming through here is we also is things happen, but God is faithful to us. God is faithful to him as long as he stays with him. Okay, so... Um, we're going to turn to Genesis chapter 40, and this is where we're going to have a couple of dreams. Um, and 
I had on here to read a bunch of these verses on here. Um, the prisoner's dreams. And it came to pass that there was a butler and a baker, and Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. I'm in verse 2, heading to 3. And he put them in custody of the house and the captain of the guard in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the uh, and the guard was charged with Joseph with them in verse 5 then the butler and the baker and the king in Egypt who were confined in the prison had a dream both of them each of the dream is one night and the man's dream um, and each man's dream with its own interpretation Joseph came to them in the morning and looked at them and he saw that they were sad he asked the Pharaoh's officers what, what's wrong with you and they said we each had a dream and there's no interpreter in it so Joseph said to them, don't interpretations come from God? Tell it to me, please. The chief butler told him his dream. He said, behold, in my dream, a vine is, was before me. In the vine were three branches, and it was that it budded. And it blossoms shot forth, and the clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then the Pharaoh's cup was in thy hand. And I took the grapes, pressed it in the Pharaoh's cup, and placed it in Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are the three days. Three days from now, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to the place where you were. And he will put you in the Pharaoh's cup in the hand according to the former manner which you were belly. But remember me when you get there. Please show me kindness. Make mention of me to the Pharaoh and get me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews and also put, have done nothing that they should put me in this dungeon. So then they came to the chief baker and he saw an interpretation was good. So he asked Joseph, also I had a dream. There were three white baskets and the uppermost basket of all the um, kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. So Joseph said, this is the interpretation of it. Three baskets or three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head. You will be hanged on the tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Now it came to pass on the third day, which is Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all the servants. He lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among the servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again. He placed the cup in his hand, but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted. Um, and so this put him back into the prison there and at this point what did the butler do at that point did he remember he he didn't he didn't remember he didn't tell Pharaoh about it um, and and so he remained over there so there there's another reason why we as I think we could think well, I've done it again. You know, how many things come at Joseph uh, throughout his life in here? And so then it came to pass that years later that Pharaoh had some dreams and he couldn't get anybody to interpret them either. So I'm going to uh, skip down here to, y'all like my little drawings that I've got up here? It took me a long time to get those. Um, <clears throat> and so... I'm in uh, chapter 41, verse 2. Suddenly there came out of the river seven cows, fine-looking and fat, and they were feeding in the meadow. Then, behold, seven other cows came up after them in the river, ugly and gaunt, stood by the other cows of the bank of the river. The ugly and the gaunt cows ate up the seven fine cows. So Pharaoh awoke. He slept and dreamed a second time, and suddenly seven heads of grain came up out of the one stalk, plump and good, them hold seven thin heads uh, blighted by the east wind sprang up after them and the seven thin heads devoured the seven plump and full heads so Pharaoh awoke and indeed it was a dream now it came to pass in the morning he was troubled he sent and called for magicians of Egypt and all the wise men and Pharaoh told him his dreams but they no one could interpret it then at that point that's when the chief Butler, he says, I know a guy, 
and he interpreted one of my dreams, and he's in your prison, um, and his name is Joseph, and so he brought him to him. And in verse 14, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have a dr I've had a dream, and there's no one who can interpret it. Um, this is, I like this, in verse 16. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer in peace. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I stood at the bank of the river. Seven cows came up. I'm going to skip down here because we've already had that. Verse 35, then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. The seven good cows are seven years and good head, uh, and the seven good heads are seven years and the, um, and the dreams are one. And the seven thin and the ugly cows which came up after them are seven years and the seven empty years blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I've spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. And so in this part right in here, <clears throat> this is Pharaoh um, has been, he said, this is the dream. And so then he gives him the next part here and he says, you need to prepare for you got seven years of plenty and seven years of famine that are coming, and so he, he needs, you need to get someone to come in here and prepare for this and take, I believe, a fifth from each one as they get their harvest in prepared for this. And then Joseph at that point has told him you need to get someone good that can do this. And Pharaoh said, like I said earlier there, he said we should get someone after the Spirit of God. And so then at that point, that's when Joseph, um, he said, why wouldn't you be that person? And so he hires Joseph. And he's going to be, um, what, what kind of, now, I, how do y'all, what kind of person, what kind of authority does he have compared to today? I'm trying to think of comparison. Vice President? What's a vice president in the United States? They're just a guy that go get pictures taken over a different country. Second in command. Second, huh? Second in okay, he is truly second in command in here. He's given them reign over everything. Um, now, how old did we think he was? About 30 years old? Okay. I, I thought I was smart when I was 30, but now I don't. I think I was very smart at 30. Can you, all right, can you think of the pressure that you would be under? You've got, you know what's, God's already revealed it to you, what's going to happen. Your job is to prepare for this. Um, what's Pharaoh going to do to you if he doesn't think you're doing it right? In a heartbeat. <laughs> He'll kill you in a heartbeat, okay? It's not like. School teachers, you can't hardly get them out, you know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Huh? Um, so, but no, seriously, um, and I think it, <coughs> to me, it, it has to be part of Joseph's faith there. Um, I just can't imagine that he's got the education and everything to be able to pull this thing off. He didn't, <coughs> but yet he trusted in God. And God has always been with them and has always blessed them in everything that he's done there. Um, because he's going to have to um, get the whole world. Um, now think about it. You're, you're going through the best times of your life. And you're going to tell everybody that they're going to need to give you one-fifth of your spoils. Because there's going to be a famine in seven years. Um, that's a hard sale. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. So, I mean, even though Joseph 
may be put in these extreme situations, he's depending on God. Right. And he does. Yeah. And it comes in God's own time. Yeah. Is the most. When God is ready to do it in a good example, that is the, the uh, dream that uh, Abraham had. Yeah. Abraham was ready to do it. Okay, so, um, excuse me, I'm starting to get dry here. Um, so then the, in verses 53 through 57, Joseph has been preparing for all these years. He builds all these bins to store all the grain in. Um, and then in verses 53 through 57 of verse 40, uh, chapter 41, 41, the famine begins. Um, and so um, by, by chapter 42, as you flip over there, um, Jacob is to the point now when he's like, we, we've got to send y'all, we need grain. And we need, we need to send some people over to Egypt. Um, or how, how do Egyptians feel about Hebrews? Anybody? They don't like to be around them, okay? And later on in this story here, you'll see Joseph when he's sitting in there and Hebrews didn't want to be, uh, the Egyptians did not want to eat in there with the Hebrews at that point. Um, so I, I would assume that the Hebrews, it would, for you to have to go get food from them, it would probably be one of the last things they'd want to do, you know. And Jacob is like, we're going to need to do this or we're going to die. <clears throat> and so... He's sending his, his sons over there, <clears throat> and uh, does he send all of his sons? Okay, so he leaves one son at home, Benjamin. Um, so here we are, the, the brothers are going out. Do, we don't, of course, we don't know about that, but do y'all sense in here any animosity towards Benjamin? No? Okay. Tell me what you would think. Is, um, the, he, he probably favored Benjamin, just like he did Joseph. Okay. What's the difference? They probably see the pain that their father has been in. Yeah. Because of what they have done, and so now they've got to take care of this. Yeah. They probably feel guilty about it. Um, and that would be the last person. I, I would think it would go far the other way, too. That would be the last person they would want this to happen to their dad again, you know. And so you don't see anything about the, the, the brothers were angry because Benjamin stayed home or anything like that. They're willing to go off and do the God, their, their father's business um, of going and buying the grain. Um, any, Ronnie? Yeah. Right. Um, but Pot, but Potiphar before that had a very high opinion of Joseph before the incident with his wife. So he he held him in that same esteem. He had rule over all of his household. Yes, he could have. Yes, he could have. It's just an interesting thing. But it doesn't, there's no evidence in the scriptures that he wanted to seek an advantage in the population. Yeah. I think that's going to be more one of those tomorrows. I'm telling you, fam family is, especially blood family, um, you can have things happen. They can do really bad things happen. And then a long time from now, you're, you can overcome some things and that you wouldn't with other people there. Um, anyway, appreciate your thoughts. We'll start there next week.